All right, guys, so I'm uh, going to get started on Chapter 13 now, uh, Condemnation, Adverse Possession. So condemnation, uh, eminent domain, adverse possession, something we talk about in a lot of different chapters uh, throughout class, but this will be the recap specifically on Chapter 13 here. Um, so just to get right started off the bat, um, this starts on page 307 in your book. So on page 307, first and foremost, condemnation. What's condemnation? So Condemnation is the government's action of taking private property for the public use just compensation paid. So an example of this would be if you have a single family house in the suburbs and currently as it stands it backs up to woods, but the government has a plan in place. They want to uh, condemn those woods and condemn where your house currently sits, knock down your house, build a new state highway. If they want to do so and they can prove that it's for the public good and they go through the right you know, uh, formal process in doing so, they are allowed to take your property. So the action when they take your property is called condemnation. So the definition of condemnation is the government's act, the key word here is act, of taking private property for the public use with just compensation paid. That compensation is fair market value. Even if you don't want to give up your property, if they can prove it's for the public good and they're going to pay you fair market value for it, you have no choice, unfortunately. Um, we also have eminent domain. Eminent domain and condemnation are the same exact thing. Eminent domain is the government's right to take your private property for the public use, just compensation paid. So again, condemnation, the government's action of taking your private property for the public use, just compensation paid. Eminent domain is the government's right to take your private property for the public use, just compensation paid. So really same exact definition with a one word difference. Um, now with this being said, when the government takes your property, Let's say you have a 10 acre farm. They don't have to take all 10 acres. They might decide they only want to take four of those acres. And in that case, of your 10 acres, they only take four and they, they leave you with six. This is what we call partial taking of condemnation. And this is a little bit different because they have to figure out how they're co gonna compensate you differently here. Because let's say um, they have an appraiser come out or an assessor and they say that those 10 acres you had were worth $900,000. But afterwards, they took four of them. And the six acres that they leave you with, they believe to be worth $600,000. So initially, worth 900. After they took four acres, only worth 600. How much did I lose in market value? I lost 300,000 in market value. And that's what the government's going to compensate me for, that $300,000. That $300,000, the way they come up with that, they use, again, what we call the before and after method. So in a partial taking of condemnation, they use the before and after method. Before, I had 10 acres worth 900. Afterwards, six acres worth 600. I lost 300,000 in market value. They pay that out to me. That's called severance damages. Um, severance damages is best used to describe the award paid out in a partial taking of condemnation. So if you guys ever see severance damages on the test and it's in relation to condemnation, they're telling you that it was a partial taking. All right, so if you turn the page here, go to, uh, go to page 308. On page 308 here, it talks about adverse possession. So adverse possession is basically squatter's rights. What this says is that if you're occupying somebody's privately owned property for either 30 or 60 years, 30 straight years if it's improved, meaning that there's a structure on it or some kind of improvement, could even be like a driveway or something like that, um, or 60 straight years if it's unimproved, meaning that it's just raw land. So again, 30 straight years for improved, 60 straight years for unimproved, then you could actually claim the property as yours through a process known as adverse possession. So with, um, with adverse possession here, on the bottom left of page 308 in your book, you'll see what these uses must be. In order to claim adverse possession to be successful, the use must be open. Open meaning that if I were to walk around, I would see you. You couldn't, as an example I was giving class, hide under a shed, dig a hole under a shed, say, hi, you know, I'm, I'm here, I've been here for 30 years, doesn't work that way. It's got to be 30 straight years, and it's got to be open, open meaning they would see you. Um, the second one listed here is exclusive, exclusive to me and my family. You can't claim adverse possession through tacking. So, as an example, it's got to be exclusive, this use, to me and my family for 30 straight years. It's not like I'm there with other people, and we take turns, I'm there for five, my friend for five, and I come back, we add it up, and it's ten. It doesn't work that way. It's got to be 30 straight years exclusive to me and my family. 
Final month of 308 continues and uninterrupted, which means 30 straight years or 60 straight years uninterrupted. Again, let's say hypothetically it's an improved property. We're there for 29 years and 11 months. And finally, the owner who owns that calls the cops and they have us removed. If they call the police and have us removed on 29 years and 11 months, the clock sets back to zero. Why? My use has been interrupted. So it's got to be 30 straight years or 60 straight years uninterrupted. Um, and also on the top right of 308, it talks about how this use has to be notorious. Notorious means against the will of the owner. So if, let's say I'm renting an apartment and I'm there for 30 straight years. After 30 straight years, do I own the apartment? No, I don't. Why? Because me and the landlord agreed that I was going to, you know, live there. I was going to occupy that, you know, from them. And I was going to pay them, let's say, 500 bucks a month. And that's what I've been doing over the past 30 years, as an example. Um, so if I do that, I can't claim adverse possession. Uh, as, as another example, though, if the owner, let's say, has 40 acres, and on the back right corner, I decide I'm going to build a log cabin. I build that log cabin. The owner says it's okay. They just, you know, want to make sure that, uh, that, you know, I'm not trying to claim adverse possession, so they uh, put something in writing or even tell me verbally, I know you're back there, it's okay that you're back there. I can't claim adverse possession. I can only claim adverse possession if it's against the will of the owner, which is what notorious means. And on the bottom right here of 308, you'll see a bolded term called quiet title proceeding. So what a quiet title proceeding is, that's kind of the process of removing a cloud on title. So if my neighbor built a fence, let's say, two feet over my property line, and I honestly have no problem that they did that. I have zero concerns. It doesn't really affect me at all. I just want to make sure that years down the line, they don't seek to try to claim that two feet of property is theirs. So I call my neighbor and I say, listen, um, I understand that fence is built two feet over my property line. I'm not going to make you pull up the fence and move it two feet. Um, that'll be a, you know, a pain in the butt for both me and you. So how about we do this? How about you sign a quick claim deed over to me which just releases any interest that I believe you might have in my property. In other words, this two feet where your fence happens to be you know, over my property line. So the instrument used to remove that cloud on title, um, we would call that instrument a, a quick claim deed. The process, though, of removing that cloud on title, we would either call an action to quiet title or a quiet title proceeding, either one of those two. And last but not least, your limitations and exceptions. Um, property owned by who would you imagine that you cannot claim adverse possession on? Property owned by the government. So you cannot claim adverse possession on any government owned land. So chapter 13, quick recap. Uh, hopefully that helps you guys out. Uh, any questions, as always, feel free to email me. Uh, my email is kylekovats at gmail.com. Thank you.